President Rick Moroz of the Board of Public Utilities will discuss the new area code change in South Jersey, the Winter Protection Program, LED lighting, microgrid, and cybersecurity. It's all here on the next Latino Motion. Join us. Choose to get lost in the woods to gain experience in forest management. Choose to travel through time to understand the past. Choose to soar to pursue a career in dance. Stockton University offers 50 high-quality academic programs, small class sizes, and affordable tuition. Choose to match your interests and talents at one of New Jersey's nationally ranked universities. Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is presented by Latino Motion Public Affairs Media, a New Jersey nonprofit corporation, and Stockton University. This edition of Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is brought to you by the HD Studios at the campus of Stockton University. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlanticare, healthcare you can believe in. Atlantic City Electric, energy for a changing world. And South Jersey Gas. Welcome to Latino Motion a weekly interview show highlighting issues impacting New Jersey's Latino community while advancing understanding of Latino cultural heritage and contributions to our society. And here is your host, Bert Lopez. Buenos dias and welcome to Latino Motion. The Board of Public Utilities, or the BPU, is the state agency with authority to oversee the regulated utilities, which in turn provide critical services such as natural gas, electricity, water, telecommunications, and cable television. Joining me is Rick Moroz, president of the Board of Public Utilities. President Moroz, welcome to Latino Motion. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's a, it's a great honor to have you here, and I know you have a very important role, and one of those roles include uh, uh, area code changes, mm -hmm. and there's one pending right now. Tell me about that. There is. So uh, this last year, the National Administrator for Area Codes informed the Board of Public Utilities that we were going to run out of numbers to be assigned in the 609 region, the, that area code. So uh, the Board of Public Utilities began a process reaching out to stakeholders, working with the National Administrator, and now there will be a new area code, an overlay within the 609 region, and that new area code is 640. So what does overlay mean exactly? How does that work? Right, so there will be a, any new number that is assigned in the 609 region will now receive that a number with that new area code. So it's overlaid over the region, which was historically the 609 area code. All right, so you're either going to have one or the other. So you're either calling a 609 or a 640 uh, within that same region. That's right. So how practically, how would that work? Well, from here on out, everyone in the 609 or now the new 640 number within that region is going to have to dial the area code plus the seven digits for the number. Even if, for example, uh, the new 640 number is their neighbor right next door. Wow. Okay. Uh, and anyone in the 856 area code, which is adjacent, of course, to the 609 region, also will have to dial the new area code plus the seven digits. I understand. In some cases, you have to dial the one first. That is correct. Area code. So it, does it make more sense just to always do the same, if, particularly if you're saving it in your, on your contacts, right? Wouldn't it be make more sense just to have the one, the area code for all numbers? And that's the smart thing to do. And that's why we're starting to uh, uh, educate uh, consumers about this and to do this work now. So as of January, uh, this January, today, we are actually asking everyone to start uh, to do that with including the entire area code. And they could program in particularly their cell phones, uh, businesses that might have a fax machine or a pre-programmed phone number, mm -hmm. like an alarm system or something that does automatic calling, should really start that process now. Though in the summer of 2018, it will be required to have that area code dialed. So there's so many things that use this phone numbers, right? Uh, you may have uh, on, your, on your car uh, a program number. You just push the button to go home. You're going to have to reset that. You mentioned the alarms mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of security alarms, right? Your right. alarm dials directly to that security company. That they call in turn call the police. They're going to get a, a wrong number or some sort of 
a message saying you, you dial in the wrong number and you won't know the difference because the computer isn't really communicating with you. So it's very smart to start planning ahead right now. That's right. And that's why we're informing people and asking them to start that process so that this summer when they really need to do it and when the new numbers begin to be assigned in the fall of 2018, there won't be any problems with people making those calls in the region. So again, it's only if you applying for a new number. So if you have a 609 area code right now and you're fine with that number, you're good, right? You're fine. They won't take it away. But as a new number is assigned in the region, they will get the 640 number. All right. So tell me, where could people get information? If they needed information about this change, where can they go? Well, they can come to our website, www.nj.gov slash BPU, and we have the instructions on what will happen, the time, and the instructions on what they should be doing, into, regardless of what area code they live in. Okay, wonderful. So that we have that information. Thank you for sharing that. Stay Thank tuned, because we want to talk a little more about some other things in the Board of Public Utilities. We'll be right back with more Latino Motion. Welcome back to Latino Motion. I'm once again here with New Jersey Board of Public Utilities President Rick Morose. And given the fact that the cold temperatures are upon us, we want to discuss the winter moratorium to prevent shutting off of gas or electric service during this time of the year. And President Morose, what exactly is this winter protection program? All right. So this winter protection program and the moratorium you mentioned is a, a program that the board has had in place for many years to prohibit uh, the gas or electric company from discontinuing service for non-payment or slow payment uh, when people are having a difficult time making those payments in their, their electric or gas uh, bills. But it must I need to just stress that they need uh, customers, if they are in dire straits, still need to contact their electric or gas company right. and apply for the program. So it's not automatic. It is not automatic. You should, apply, right. you should apply for the program. So how exactly does it work? So they have to contact the utility company. They have to apply for the program. And this is between March of March 15th of, uh, of the spring until November. Uh, and, and after November, uh, they, there will, would no, be no shutoff until March. Uh, but people have to also remember they have to continue to make payments. They have to work out a payment plan mm -hmm. once they apply with the utility company. It's also good uh, to continue making those payments. Right? If you get too far uh, behind, then when it comes to that cut off in March, you're going to be subject to being shut off. Correct? Right. So it is a requirement that they continue to make payments. But as a practical matter, the customer doesn't want to be in a position where uh, they get to uh, the springtime and they have a huge payment that they have to make. So we first, you know, uh, the program does uh, expect the people to continue to make payments, but they just don't need to have that balloon payment at the end of the program. Right. There are other programs that also provide assistance for those mm -hmm. individuals who might be going through a struggle, unable to pay their bills. Tell me about some of those other right. programs. We have a whole number of programs. The Lifeline Credit Program, uh, Federal Home Energy Assistance Program, uh, First New Jersey Temporary Assistance Program. Uh, these are all either low-income programs or programs for those of, who experience financial hardship. Okay. They can apply to, through the board. They mm -hmm. can contact the uh, utility company for more information on how to apply for those, that assistance. Now, this is all available through the website, correct? It is. So uh, customers should be able to first contact, if they wish, their utility. Otherwise, to go to our website, which is www.nj.gov backslash BPU backslash assistance. Now, you, you have a couple other programs that are uh, independent of the Board of Public Utilities, like New Jersey Shares right. and True Program. Tell me about yeah, those. We have, we have partnerships with others that uh, provide additional other uh, assistance. That New Jersey Shares is one. Uh, it is for those who are having uh, put, uh, short term financial mm -hmm. problems. Uh, also, the Lifeline helps seniors and uh, the disabled with their electric and gas bills as well. And there's also a True Program, a PAGE Program? A True and a PAGE Program, and that helps middle income households as okay. well. So they can look at our website for all the information and how they can be uh, the eligibility requirements and how they can apply. So if you qualify for these programs, you should take advantage of should them. should take advantage of them. And we do want to talk more quickly about the cost of electric. Is, has it actually been coming down? It has. It has been coming down. And over the last couple of years, we've seen about a 6% decrease in the cost of electricity prices in New Jersey. So that's a good story. Good story for everyone in the state. Yeah, very good story. 
Thank you for sharing that information. We're going to continue our discussion. We'll be right back with more Latino Motion. Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is presented by Latino Motion Public Affairs Media, a New Jersey nonprofit corporation. Join us online at www.latinomotion.tv. Find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. We encourage your comments and contributions for show topics. Welcome back to Latino Motion. I'm here once again with New Jersey Board of Public Utilities, President Rick Morose. And one area of focus for the BPU has been this concept of a microgrid. And President Morose, what is a microgrid? Well, a microgrid is simply a local area where there is on-site generation and the on-site distribution of energy. And this can be either in one building or, say, on a college campus where there is electricity or energy generated right there and it's used right there, and it can be separated from the larger grid or islanded in the case of an outage of the larger electric grid. So I, I know that there's been some coverage in the news about this whole thing, and there have been some local communities that have signed up, if you will, uh, for this microgrid. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, um, since Superstorm Sandy, the BPU has been looking at these issues. Uh, we actually rewrote the energy master plan for the state to include a whole area and focus on resiliency mm. and specifically okay. the use of microgrids. And last year, the Board of Public Utilities approved a program where local municipalities and partners could apply for funding that we would provide to help prove out whether these microgrids can work. And which communities? So we uh, received applications in 13 separate locations, 13 municipalities throughout the state. So here in this area, here at Galloway, uh, which, that includes uh, Stockton University, um, Cape May, Atlantic City, uh, Patterson, and other communities throughout the state have all applied. And we have granted funding for all of them, all 13 locations, to try to prove out how these microgrids can work. Do you have any location in the state that shows that they do work? Well, we have several uh, working microgrids in the state. One in particular that we mention routinely is Princeton University. And during Superstorm Sandy, actually, uh, Princeton University was able to separate from the grid, continue to have the lights on during the storm because of their on-site generation. Yeah, I believe that some of the literature says that they were out for only 20 minutes. That, that's uh, right. While the rest of the state was out for days, right? right. But they were separated from the grid, and right. that larger grid was out for several weeks. So the microgrid really worked there. So this only works during emergencies? I mean, can they still generate uh, uh, during a blue sky day? They can. They can use that on-site generation to try and reduce their costs, and that's what many microgrids will do. So we're looking at the microgrid for uh, energy efficiency for on-site generation and how that can be done uh, at a be better cost to the users of them at that microgrid or for resiliency in the case of an outage at, of the grid at, at a larger level. Just briefly tell me about some of the other resiliency type projects right. that you engage with. Well, the BPU has been looking at resiliency and the hardening of our grid sort of across all of the sectors. So after Superstorm Sandy, for instance, mm -hmm. our electric companies have invested about two and a half billion dollars. Wow. Our uh, gas companies in this state, uh, a little more than that, about $2.8 billion. About $8 billion in electric, gas, and water companies since Superstorm Sandy and hardening that infrastructure and making sure that the lights can stay on, the gas keeps flowing, and the water keeps flowing to customers. So hardening means anything from uh, raising the equipment up to really putting steel structures and other things like that? It does. It means new pipes in the ground. It means new, new poles. It means uh, lifting uh, generation stations. The whole gamut across the board in this state, that infrastructure is being hardened. If someone's interested in getting more information on that, uh, they can also go to the website. They can correct? come to our website, which is the nj.gov backslash BPU. Good. We still got more to cover, so thank you so much, and we'll be right back with more Latino Motion. Welcome back to Latino Motion. Recently, Atlanta City officials and Atlanta City Electric's regional president, Vince Mayon, announced the conversion of all streetlights in Atlanta City to LED technology. I'm once again pleased to have the president of the Board of Public Utilities, Rick Morose, to tell us more about this new trend. So President Morose, is this a good thing? It is a good thing. It's a good thing for a couple of reasons. Okay. LED technology, um, as well as 
energy efficiency products that uh, we've been ins installing and funding for years uh, is good because it saves money, it saves cost, particularly of electric, and it also, in this instance, for lighting, it has a better quality of lighting, so it makes the streets safer. So who's saving the money? So the city can save money. Okay. So uh, in Atlantic City, where I was pleased to join uh, Mr. Mayon and uh, 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 the former mayor, uh, along with city officials, to look at that installation a couple of weeks ago, uh, we know that the city could save money because when they install those lights, they can reduce their costs a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, in fact. Oh, that's a uh, significant savings. It, it is. And uh, a couple of months ago, I was in Hamilton also with Mr. Mayon okay. uh, to, and, and city officials to look at the installation there. And in Hamilton, uh, they're saving about $120,000 a year on a $300,000 annual cost of their electricity for streetlights. So is this the same type of LED lighting that we use at in our home, we can get at home, home Depot. Does it save money for us at home as well? It, it does. Um, LED lights uh, have long been a part of the Board of Public Utilities suite of programs, our energy efficiency programs. So these new technologies can reduce the cost to any consumer for what they spend for electricity to light those lights. Uh, and it gives a better quality of light as well. Now, I, I know that there's also some concerns about uh, LED lighting. Uh, is this safe? It's safe. The, um, the, these are light bulbs that are also go through uh, testing, such as underwriters laboratories, and they're safe to, for installation, whether it's on the streets or whether it's in your home. So the LED lighting that we see out in the street um, right now, the yellowish color, that's more of the incandescent or the uh, uh, low pressure sodium, that's or right. high pressure sodium lights that we see out there. So the brighter ones are, those are the LED so lighting? The brighter, cleaner um, light are the LED lights, and you'll see more and more of them. We have uh, towns all throughout the state that have been asking uh, for our assistance in helping to fund uh, the installation of LED street lights. Uh, towns like uh, Ventnor and Glassboro, and even in the, in the capital city of Trenton. So how does the BPU get involved with those? Towns? Right, so through our energy efficiency programs, we okay. can help fund them. And the electric companies all uh, are looking at tariff revisions so that they can help provide those uh, lights to, to various cities. If you have a, uh, I know this is beneficial for the towns, mm -hmm. if you have a small business and you want to get into other energy efficiency type programs, does the BPU help with that as well? It does. And through our clean energy program, uh, our energy efficiency program, uh, we will help uh, applicants and businesses throughout the state or other local governments to do the same. We'll help advise them on energy audits and then the kinds of programs that they can install uh, energy efficiency so, programs. Uh, are these free energy audits? Well, uh, for local municipalities, we do have a program that uh, does that. And for businesses, the, we also can help them with auditing their energy uh, needs and how they can install this equipment. We'll, we'll put up the website as well for the Absolutely. more information. Thank yes. you so much. We'll, not done yet. We'll okay. be right back with more Latino Motion. Welcome back to Latino Motion. It seems almost weekly that we see news coverage about big retailers and other businesses being victims of cyber attacks, and no one better than the president of the Board of Public Utilities to address what utilities are doing here in New Jersey to avoid becoming victims. President Moroz, what are utilities doing? Well, they've been very active in this front, and uh, we're pleased about that. We've been working very actively with the, all the utility companies in New Jersey for many years. Back in 2009, the Board of Public Utilities was probably the first public utility commission in the country to issue an order to work collaboratively with the utilities to get the companies to bring forward a plan on how to secure their operations from cyber attacks. And then in uh, 2016, we issued a very specific order after having worked with the companies, uh, the companies to undertake training, to do tr uh, testing of their systems, and then to put in place recovery uh, plans in the event that there is a cyber attack. So they've been very busy, and we've been very busy working with the utility companies. What's the downside of not heeding this? I mean, this, this is very critical, it's very, very important for the whole nation. 
Mm -hmm. Why is this so important, particularly for utilities, to heed this message? Well, unfortunately, as we've seen, uh, as you said earlier in the news, uh, we see these attacks all the time, and they can come from terrorists, they can come from a hacker, or they can come from a nation state. Uh, and they can attempt to penetrate our computer systems. And for the utilities, that may mean the systems that keep the water, the gas, or the electric flowing. And that could be a real problem, of course, if that those systems are attacked. So that's why these critical uh, systems need to be protected. Can you just give me a quickly, what are some of the things that they're doing to uh, make sure that doesn't happen? Right, so we uh, know that the companies are putting in place uh, firewalls and doing penetration testing. They actually test uh, their own systems to see if they can get in uh, as if a hacker were doing it to try and avoid those kinds of attacks. And the other is they're working with regulators or like ourselves or with the federal agencies in the event that there is an attack, how they respond to it, how they can rebuild their system and make sure that they can recover from that kind of attack. This kind of thing is just as important for us as individuals what, can, what safeguards can we take in our own homes? Right. We should make sure that we update our operating systems, that uh, a consumer goes and changes their passwords regularly. And the other is where there are these um, uh, phishing expeditions, mm -hmm. these spear phishing expeditions, usually through email. Very suspicious emails. Don't click on them if you don't know where it comes from, because if you open it up, it could attack your own computer system. And, and they've gotten a lot smarter on those phishing uh, type of emails. You know, it's, not, it's no longer a prince mm -hmm. from another foreign land, right? Uh, right. They, they, they could be talking to you as if they know you or even use logos that you may recognize uh, to kind of trap you to get open those emails. That's right. So people have to be wary of what's coming in to their um, systems, uh, their email, uh, even their social media. They should be wary of what, what they're receiving. Be aware. Uh, and make sure that they're downloading, uh, people are downloading all the safeguards, all the updated systems, and all those protections that can help them avoid those kinds of attacks. And you mentioned changing your operating system when it gets updated. A right. lot of, of times it has fixes for possible bugs. So it's very important that we do that. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing this thank uh, you. information with the audience and for spending the time here on Latino Motion. Thanks for having and me. And thank you for joining us once again here on Latino Motion. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlanticare, healthcare you can believe in, Atlantic City Electric, energy for a changing world, and South Jersey Gas.